guys, 2022 is here, or at least the Autodesk products are. Now, I haven't taken a deep dive into all the new features yet, but there are a lot of videos about this at this point. But one thing caught my attention, and that is the new integration between Revit and Formit. Hi everyone, I'm Berti with BIM Lounge, it's good to see you. Now in this video, I'm going to give you my first impressions about working with Formit and Revit and uh, let you know what I like and uh, what I think it can be improved. Let me show you. So for this exercise, I'd like to test out Format 2022 with Revit 2022 to see if we can achieve some kind of uh, immersive uh, sketching. Now, what I'd like to do is go ahead and uh, replace this fireplace with uh, something else that we can design in Format and hopefully somehow end handle back in Revit. Now, I was going to take advantage of this exercise so I, I can also show you how you can uh, easily create 3D section box views with a 22 app. Now we already have the room, we're going to analyze the living room. So what I'll do is head over to the 22, plug in and we're going to create the view. Now let's focus on the living and we're going to create a 3D view. Now what I'll do here is probably assign a prefix because I want to make it clear that this is a work in progress view and I guess we can leave it at that so we can go ahead and create the view. Let's take a look. Great, so the plugin read the room size, but obviously it's uh, right exactly at the room dimension, so we don't see the walls at this point. So let's go ahead and uh, fix that. Now you don't have to go through the 22 plugin in order to achieve this. Obviously, you can go ahead and duplicate the original 3D view and make your selection like so for example and then click on the selection box and you'll pretty much achieve the same thing. The reason why I like doing it with a plugin is because you get the actual crop and it's saved in a view and then uh, when uh, you're ready to start doing some sketching or some uh, massing in there all you have to do is go to massing insight and click on format 3d sketch and that's our new function there with 22 and see you can select format with launch format with all visible Revit objects because this is exactly what we want to see in format otherwise we would have to select all the objects so let's go ahead and pick that and Revit will launch format and as you can see that's exactly the selection that we have created in Revit now the first thing you notice here is that you can't really select the Revit model, so it's uh, almost like a LinkedIn file that you can't really do anything with. But we can always add geometries, so let's go ahead and do that. First, I'd like to get this uh, fireplace out of the way. So let's figure out how to do that in Revit and uh, update that model. So let me select that fireplace. You can either delete it or um, hide it. Maybe at this point we can uh, try to hide it. So it's still there in the model if we need it. And let's send it back to Format. Now a downside that I see in this is that Revit doesn't really update the current Format model, but it creates another session. I think for now is doable. You know, you can of course use it like this, but in the future I, I would probably like to see something more seamless. So just one window. At this point, I have the room without the original fireplace, so I can go ahead and uh, create my own. And uh, let's go ahead and create a simple sketch here. Let's try to create a very, very simple shape. Like so. And I'm going to let you be the designer because I'm sure you can uh, do a better job course you can be accurate here but the purpose of this exercise is to just work out the workflow and verify if it's really usable or not now that we at least have a simple shape to work with I'd like to show you a few things that need to happen before you send the model back to Revit for example you may want to select the whole geometry and I just double clicked and I selected the entire geometry and I would create a layer that for example is called fireplace something that makes sense. In this case, 
and we're going to put that selection under the right layer. Now, another thing you may want to do is at least assign a material so it doesn't come through as gray. Now, we can uh, just go ahead and access any of these. Maybe it could be brick. Maybe we can go ahead and uh, select that brick and assign it to all those faces like so. So that we at least have a material that we can show in Revit. Now that we're done, we can uh, send the model back to Revit and you see you have this new icon right there. And of course, we're going to send all the visible items. And right away, I noticed that we seem to need to adjust the insertion level of this geometry. For example, for some reason, it's reading foundation instead of level one. So let's fix that to level one. And you see that the base point of the fireplace updates just fine. Now let's head over to a 3D view that I created there. And uh, we have the old fireplace, of course. We can go ahead and hide it. And this is our study geometry. Now let's see what we can do with it. Now the first thing you may want to do is check the geometry to see what you can do with it. So for example, if you click, you'll see that it uh, shows as an import symbol. Now if you explode the geometry, and explode in this case just means that if you have different geometries, for example, if you have a, a fireplace and uh, other components in format, it will separate that whole import into separate geometries, which is what we want. Now in format, we assign the material. So let's go ahead and see if it's visible in Revit. So of course we can head over to the realistic view and uh, the material is showing properly and uh, you can modify the material within Revit. You can actually access that if you go to Manage Materials. What's interesting here is that the material will be grouped under Format, and this is our material. So you can go ahead and um, tweak the material from there, and uh, the asset seems to be the same as the one that you see in Format, so you have that as well. What can you actually do with the geometry? Is it static? Well, it seems like you can actually move it like so. I wouldn't really recommend it because you may want to keep the original format shape in format in the original location. Now, can you use this object to snap other items to it? For example, let's try to create a wall. A lot of times these shapes are walls with openings. So let's try that. So if you head over to architecture, wall and maybe select pick lines it doesn't really let you snap or use that geometry for the wall what if we wanted to continue developing this shape as an in-place family let's try that now i've already exploded the model make sure that you explode the model so you're working on this specific shape now I'm going to create an in-place model and just for simplicity, I'm, I'm going to make it a wall category. Now, what I like about this is that at least Revit lets you set the work plane and it will read the planes that you created in Format. So I already set my plane there and now I can uh, create an extrusion like so. And as you can see, it read that face. And now I can easily continue my shapes there. Now you could recreate the whole geometry in Revit as an in-place family, but it probably defeats the purpose of using Format. So at least you have the ability to snap with other in-place geometries. And that should help. Now, based on this first very simple exercise, these are the things that I like and things I think they should be improved. Now, I'm curious, have you used Format before? And after seeing this, uh, do you think you'll uh, be playing with it more? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.